I love bliss balls. Mm. It's nutty. This one has cocoa nibs in it as well. Very good snack. But what if we don't just stop there? What if we added a layer of chunky peanut butter and some chocolate? This is vegan chocolate too. Then you'd end up with something like this. One layer of bliss ball, one layer of chunky peanut butter and chocolate topping. We'll show you how. Before we get on with the video, only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed. If you end up liking this video, do consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. It really does help me out. Place two cups of pitted dates in a mixing bowl and cover with boiling water. Set aside. Melt half a cup of cocoa butter. I'll be using the double boiler method here. You can also substitute this for coconut oil. Put one cup of raw cashews in a grinder and blitz briefly. You want the size of rough breadcrumbs. Pour this into a large mixing bowl. Repeat with a cup of raw almonds. And then mix the two ground nuts together. If you have a food processor with a large bowl, you can blitz both at the same time. Add one cup of cocoa nibs and mix. The dates should now have softened up. Blitz the dates into a rough pulp in batches if needed. Then add the pulp to the nut mix. Finally, add half a cup of cocoa powder and one tablespoon of honey. Mix everything roughly together, then pour in the melted butter or coconut oil. Mix till well combined. At this stage, you can shape the dough into bliss balls with about one heaped tablespoonful of dough. Shape into a smooth round and then roll around in some cocoa powder to coat. Or you can continue and level up your bliss balls. Take a slice tin and line with baking paper. Distribute the nutty date mix evenly in the lined tin. Place in the fridge while you prepare the next layer. I like super crunchy peanut butter, but you can also use smooth. Put two cups of peanut butter in a small saucepan. Add about a quarter of a cup of coconut oil and two tablespoons of maple syrup. Heat gently on low until the coconut oil melts and stir everything together. Take the sliced in out of the fridge. Scrape every single peanut buttery goodness out of the pot onto the base. Then spread the peanut butter mix evenly on the base. Tap the tin roughly on the kitchen bench to flatten it out. Put back in the fridge while you get the top layer ready. For this slice, I'm using a plant-based chocolate bar by Whitaker's. You can use any bar you like. I also sometimes use the 62% cocoa, also from Whitaker's. Now let me show you the easiest way to break this beauty into smaller pieces. Pour into a bowl and break up the bigger pieces. Add about 25 grams of cocoa butter or coconut oil. Use whatever method you prefer to melt the chocolate. Again, I'll be using the double boiler method. Take the tray out of the fridge Pour the velvety chocolate on top. 
Tap the tray on the kitchen bench a few times to remove the air bubbles. And return to the fridge until the top layer is set. To slice these beauties into little squares, you will need a tall jar about as tall as your knife. Fill it up with boiling water and place your knife in it. This will heat up the knife blade so that it cuts through the set chocolate like cutting through soft butter. Have some paper towels ready too to wipe the blade dry. I usually cut these in about an inch square. Store in an airtight container in the fridge. They make perfect gifts too. You can either wrap them up in greaseproof paper and then you can pack them up in little boxes. Check out my Something Sweet playlist for more sweet treats or the In the Kitchen playlist for what I cook in my kitchen. Thanks for watching.